Good afternoon. I would like to welcome my favorite testers. I wish I could travel with you and play a game about what testers can do in order to improve the system. But since it wasn't to be, we are going to do it online. The idea is for you to walk away with uh, a good result. This is uh, the structure of my presentation. What are we building? Who are we building for? A bit about the V diagram. Uh, this is my contact information and background. What makes a successful system? A successful system, a system is successful only then when people or users are able to achieve something that could not be achieved without the system. I'm going to focus on those who order this system, although there are different variations of this system available. Your role in this tester's role, I mean, is very, very responsible. It is meant to verify if a system meets expectations of those who work or use the system. It's sort of uh, compliance verification. How many of you know what a V diagram is? I see one hand being raised. V diagram is an engineering requirements notion which demonstrates the entire route and all the points along the way along the way that you can track. Here you can see the key points of this system. First we have customer's idea, execution of requirements, designing, implementation, building and testing, verification, acceptance and operation. We are going to use this V diagram to get an idea of what happens when quality is compromised. First thing we can say is when we start to implement some faults begin to crop up to detect those faults and errors based on development requirements you check it by testing so we obtain data and see what went wrong at a higher level defects are also identified at the designing stage then they are transferred for execution the same code 
but containing modifications uh, from a lower level. So it's a continual process of checking and rechecking. Moving further upward, customers may check if something went wrong at a higher level. Customer's idea is uh, changeable as well. Maybe it wasn't what the customer meant. So it's all modifiable. But the best approach is to try to find and fix a fault as soon as possible in the cycle, as early as possible in the cycle. Survey stage. Please raise hands, those of you who worked uh, with the survey stage, do, do you know what it is? Raise hand if you know what it is. Analysts, of course. Examination or survey stage. What happens here? This is where requirements are formulated and the scope of a project is determined. If there is misscoping, it creates issues for testing. You could do less or you could overdo in conflict with the customer's requirements. So what can testers deliver in this case? They check results in terms of business requirements, problems and opportunities. I'm going to mention all the results of examination or review. But based on this review, analysts determine the scope of a project. And this is something that testers really need to give a very hard look. So that later you will be in a position to say whether an app is in line with customers' requirements. Is there compliance with customers' requirements? Basically, what we need to do is to read and review customers' requirements, trying to figure out what a customer wants from our system. Next stage is planning from a tester's perspective. This is where they can help a lot. If testers drop in to have a look at it, what we do under planning is assessing scope and timeline, finalize other resources, entry into contract, a lead tester could uh, try and get more information about a particular project. What is the potential contribution of a tester to this plan? First, verifying readiness criteria or acceptance. 
divide a system into functions or components. Compile a, tes a testing plan. Provide a request for resources required for testing. Incorporate in the plan activities related to testing. Functional, loading, integration, regression testing may be required. You have to take into account all these possibilities. Readiness criteria. There's always something that's left undone. There are always some margin for error. So we may make a deal with a customer that we deliver with 70% readiness. Or we provide to a customer confirmation of compliance with the uh, functionalities included in the business requirements. Or all functions have been executed, listed as the main ones. Which means that in this case we have taken care of most of the bugs. This is something that needs to be discussed up front. What are the criteria for delivery? Next stage is designing. I have to say this, I wasn't warned, I wasn't alerted that there is one hour time difference, so I had made proper preparations with examples. But anyway, this one I will leave for later. Maybe I will finish earlier. Under planning, oftentimes, this a fault that you can fix. The system gets developed, analysts have done their bit, developers have done their bit, but when it comes to testing, it turned out there is no testing bench, so nothing to test on. You know, there are, there are different types of testing. Integration, in, introduction, someone responsible may have forgotten that licenses are required. So you have to give it a 360 degree look. Often testers are knowledgeable about bailiwicks of other specialists. Because other guys, they keep changing fields of expertise, but testers stick with what they do. If you have a person like that, a universalist, they may be self 
They may be shy, self-confident. So please keep them in mind in your group. Next stage is designing. I think I've played games before during the SQA days about how testers can help analysts in the cause. Let me say that when testers review requirements, they need to treat it with caution, and those include business process description, requirements. I don't think I should uh, name all of them. You can see it on the screen. Those are the most known mistakes. So you can ask questions when you talk to analysts. This will help your performance and uh, this will reduce the number of developer mistakes as well. Now development. During this stage, what do we do? We develop code and we create and we do the tuning. And, uh, and code has to be improved. And you have to uh, introduce the access rights and uh, provide consultations and code verification scenarios if needed. Now, testing the compliance, testing what can testers do. In addition to just testing things, uh, you can come up with a testing checklist. Then infrastructure stands uh, well, the setup so you can check it several times. I don't think I should dwell on this. You know it better than I do. Now, testing scenarios. You need to write the result, and then you need to prepare the report. You need to identify a unit, business process, function. It has to be in bigger units. Now, functional testing plan. You have to do the checklist scenarios. I think well, later you, you might write to me if I'm right or wrong. This is a, an example of a scenario, functional testing. This is, uh, those are the scenarios. But you have to understand that I am not an experienced tester. But this is what I believe. Please correct me if you don't agree. 
life cycle uh, also. Uh, there's a link and I enjoyed reading those. All the steps are quite clear. Other types of testing, don't forget about those. You need to think about those, you need to know what you're testing and uh, you need to pick the elements where the, the most troubling. Sometimes they stand in the way. The peak loads, because you know I'm just hitting the high spots here. Now integration testing with the uh, with the other party. Unless we do this many a time, have I run into this? Sometimes things happen. No, regressional testing. Usually they, they do it themselves because this can affect a anything. Even inside there could be variables that can be an issue. And the through testing, I will give a bit more details about it. No functional test, non-functional testing. Six elements that we should test, but we should, that should be pinpoint. We need to pick the point which is the most critical. And of course, this includes experience. Now, E to E testing. This is end to end. Of course, it's difficult, it's tough, but this helps a lot because when you're testing just bits and pieces, it's one thing, another thing when you're testing the whole thing. I heard about this term yesterday. I was chatting with some of my colleagues and they came up with this recommendation. So I was looking at it and I thought this is important. We called it com we call it comprehensive testing before. No. Introduction. Uh, data transfer, training. Now, what can a tester do? Lots of things. Uh, quite often, it's the introduction could be in different regions. It can work in one region, and once we do it here, there's another region. Or you, when you pass it on to someone, it doesn't necessarily work sometimes. This is just uh, from my experience, naturally. You should also test the uh, migration method. And don't forget that you need to run it once again. 
before industrial run, before the industrial production. You have to run a test. And then sometimes we put it aside for months and then the operation begins and there suddenly there is a problem. So the second migration, don't forget about the second migration. Now, uh, the use. We can support the operation and test for errors and whether it's the first or second defect or error, we need to test it. Quite often, users are complaining that the data is different, different rights, something doesn't work. And here comes an error. Doesn't work, doesn't run. And it means that they are using it improperly. So, you need to understand the business process or it should be described properly because it's quite important. We always need to support. It's important. And also, another important element is comparison. You need to identify the most common bugs. Maybe business process is, is wrong. You need to compare the defects. During the fine tuning, could be different. So, to sum up, we're not testing, it's not about the bugs, it's about the quality of the system. So, you need checklists. Don't just test the software, but business process regulations and do the bottom up, 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 go from top to bottom. What are you doing? What does the system do? I use the end to end testing because stakeholder need uh, quality result. Thank you very much. There are some links here. And uh, any time. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you for your presentation. During development, testers' influence could be a safety issue for him. And uh, during the planning, perhaps, look. Well, I didn't give you much. Or help them with the data. Now, what do the developers do? 
they take this and they start coding this, so unless the quality data, they would just take it from from the top of his head. It doesn't matter whether it runs, but this business process doesn't run. Well, of course, some can do it, but if we give this suite right from the start, then it's going to make things easier. And then he would know better what to do about it. That's what I meant. Well, safety. You know, working is unsafe. You need to look for compromise. Well, it's up to you. Test it. To fine tune it. If that's what you meant, right? Isn't that what the architect should do? Which, what you're saying? What are you talking about? To give data for fine tuning? Or just by and large? No, that was a mistake. Is this an answer? Yes, thank you. Thank you. What should the architect You see, he should be able to create any element, but he has to be aware of what data he is dealing with. So architect will not suffice. I don't want to say a lower level experts, but experts of a different field of expertise should do this. T tester's role in all of this is very high, very important. I know of multi-task teams with no tester's presence. It doesn't mean there is no testing presence. It means that a developer takes up the job of a tester. There cannot be no testing. Why did we break into different fields? Because it's no time for loners. Systems are such that you need to have speed. I and my colleague, two of us pieced together a system, made it automatic. We had no network back then, back in the day, but not anymore. It's not going to fly no more. That's why there is this uh, separation into specialities. An architect needs to know it. Uh, you can uh, award a prize for the best question. There was a question about a code and an architect. I like the one about the code better because it invoked the work of a tester. It's important to ask questions. If you go to an analyst and say, hey, here's a problem, here's an issue, any analyst 
will take it too personally and become defensive. But if you ask a question, how would you explain this? Then he will spot an error himself and become nice and easy to deal with. Thank you very much. Go celebrate. I'm happy that you joined my talk, although the crowd is not very big.